Welcome to Super Budget Commanders. I'm your host, Alex. Thanks for joining me. Today, I'll be sharing Amina and Den Wildborn Elf Tribal Deck. I'm stoked to get this out to you guys, and I think you're going to love it. Seriously. After finishing this deck list, I wanted to immediately sleeve it up and start playing with these cards. As always, a Super Budget Commander deck is fun to play, less than $50 to purchase, and most cards, including the Commander, cost less than $1. My goal has, and always will be, to build solid decks that don't break the bank. Quick side note before we get things started, all prices listed here are directly from TCG Player. They are current as of the release date of this video. Mina and Den are a highly underrated Gruul commander pair. This deck is every Gruul player's dream. Prepare to mana ramp, attack a lot, and smash your opponent's permanents into dust. I've specifically chosen elves that help power out Mina and Den quickly and put lands in your hand. Now that we know a bit more about our commanders, let's meet the rest of the tribe. Let's start it off with the little guys. Arbor Elf, Elvish Mystic, and Findhorn Elves are ideal early game plays. They enable Mina and Den to be played by turn 3, or some of the 3 cost elves to hit the battlefield on turn 2. Never underestimate a Mana Dork. Braga Tree Speaker is a fantastic add here. Realistically, you should only level her up once, just to take advantage of tapping her for 2 mana. If you happen to have a game go long, and there's some extra mana laying around, it doesn't hurt to pump her up to level 5 and help give yourself a tremendous advantage. Quirion Ranger should be called Mina and Den's best friend. With Mina and Den and Quirion in play, you can return a forest to your hand, untap a mana dork, then use Mina and Den's ability to replay the land you put back in your hand. Rada, heir to Keld, is quite the angry elf. Great at generating mana early on though, so we'll take it. Sylvan Ranger is the first of four elves in this deck that tutor for lands when they enter the battlefield. Who knew that having lands in your hand with Mina and Den on the battlefield was a good thing? Civic Wayfinder and Farhaven Elf have arrived to continue the time-honored tradition of putting lands in our hand. Elvish Harbringer is one of my favorite elves. She can tutor you out whatever elf you need, and trust me, there's some spicy elves coming up that you'll want to be able to snag. She can also tap for a mana, because who doesn't want more mana, right? Rishkar is what I call the Mana Dork Converter. He can make creatures, like Wood Elves, even better than they already are. Wood Elves is just another member of the Put Lands in My Hand fraternity. A great bonus with Wood Elves is they allow you to find any forest card, even dual lands that have a forest typing. That can definitely come in handy. The more our numbers grow, the more life we gain. That's Essence Warden in a nutshell. Sylvan Advocate bulks up once we reach 6 lands. We also have several methods for creating land creatures in this deck, and he makes that strategy even more viable. Wolf Skull Shaman is a solid budget creature. Every creature in this deck is an elf, so odds are good that his ability triggers. Tribal Force Mage not only has a sweet name, he has a mini overrun as an ability. A plus 2 plus 2 buff for all elves and trample is the stuff dreams are made of. Why only have wolf tokens when you can have bear tokens too? Plus, Collar of the Claw can be played in response to an opponent playing a board wipe. Guiltleaf Seer is here to help us to see into the future and manipulate the top of our library to our advantage. Bloodbraid Elf is all value. A 3-2 with haste and cascade is just too good in a deck like this. I'll always take an extra helping of free spells. Tana is as deadly as they come, especially if she gets a buff or two. If she isn't shut down quickly, your opponents will be overwhelmed. Remember Sylvan Advocate? He and Ambush Commander are pretty good pals. A game can flip quickly when your lands become creatures. Be careful though, because a creature board wipe will take out your lands too. Elvish Soul Tiller is here to bring back any of our fallen comrades. Plus, he's a mutant elf, so he gets bonus points for that. Viridian Zealot and Reclamation Sage are both solid removal options. Zealot has the benefit of being able to sacrifice himself at instant speed to take out any pesky artifacts or enchantments. Rexage doesn't have the benefit of instant speed, but overall you spend one less mana to remove something with him than you do with Zealot. Oh lordy. Imperious Perfect isn't quite flawless, but she definitely gets the job done. Her buff means that she creates 2-2 elf tokens for only one green mana. 
Pair her with Quirion Ranger and you can potentially generate two elf tokens with her every turn. Dwynan has the benefit of being able to swap down pesky flyers, as well as buffing her elven comrades. Her last ability is just extra value. Stack that life total up to the ceiling. Remember Rishkar? Nissa's minus two ability pairs so well with him, it's scary. With those two's combined powers, you could have an army of creatures that can all tap for mana or smash face. Her plus one is useful in a theme like this that wants to play aggressively and swing wide with a large army. It also provides her with a chump blocker she can use to protect herself from harm. Triggering her ultimate ability is unlikely, but if you can, prepare to draw a lot of cards and gain a lot of life. This Nissa's greatest upside is her mana cost. At only 3 mana, it's possible to get her on the field on turn 2, if she's in your opening hand, of course. The removal cards in this deck are mostly instant speed and cheap to cast. As soon as a threat appears, it's important to be able to interact with it. Nature's Claim is fantastic in any green deck. One mana removal at instant speed is hard to come by. Naturalize and Destructive Revelry are versatile, effective removal. Hole Breach is practically a staple card in any deck running green and red. Being able to take out two artifacts or enchantments for only two mana is fantastic. Beast Within might give your opponent a beast token, but its upside is undeniable. Being able to shred any permanent is incredibly valuable. Mass removal comes in the form of Decimate and Comet Storm. Decimate can be tough to pull off seeing as you need 4 valid permanents to target, but casting it is a great feeling. Bonus points if you pick one person and blow up 4 of their permanents. Comet Storm works best in decks with lots of expendable mana, so this one. It can take out your opponent's pesky creatures or just drop a giant comet directly on their head. With budget decks, it's important to use cards that have multiple beneficial effects. Explore is one of those cards. Dropping an extra land and drawing a card is simply great. Rampant Growth is excellent in the early game to help fix your mana. Another solid green card. Speaking of solid green cards, Aro lets you sack a land and replace it with two untapped basic lands. Seems like a good trade-off to me. Cultivate and Kodama's Reach are functionally the same exact card with two different names. Both are arguably two of the best green ramp spells in the game. On to everyone's favorite thing, card draw. Faithless looting is a mainstay in red decks everywhere. That's not changing today. Magmatic Insight is a spell people generally shy away from, but with this particular deck, it's surprisingly good. Here's another one to add to my underrated cards list, Life's Legacy. There will come a time when you need cards more than you need a fat elf, and Life's Legacy will be your new best friend. Commune with Lava is a very unique spell. It essentially gives you access to a few cards for a full turn. If you don't use them, you lose them. Rounding out the card draw spells are Harmonize and Shamanic Revelation. Harmonize is simple enough. Pay 4 mana, draw 3 cards. Shamanic Revelation is a perfect play when you have a board full of bloodthirsty elves. The best spells are the ones that can do a bit of everything. Evolution Charm can help you ramp, recur a creature from your graveyard, or give an elf flying. Gruel Charm is great for preventing an opponent from blocking, retaining ownership of your permanents, or shooting all the flying creatures in the face for 3 damage. Your opponents won't always let you have nice things, so being able to get those things back once they're gone is important. Reclaim and Revive allow you to save a card that otherwise would have no shot at returning to your hand. What good are creatures if you can never find them? Signal the Clans allows you to nab three creatures and randomly get one of them in your hand. Time of Need gives you access to Dwynan, Tana, and Rada. You wouldn't want them to miss out on the fun. For Lead the Stampede to work, you'll need a bit of luck, but that comes with the territory. Last, but certainly not least, we have Game Changers. Theoretically, these cards should win us the game or put us within reach of winning. With proper timing, Elvish Promenade is backbreaking for your opponents. Overwhelming Stampede is meant to give your Elf Tribe the last little boost they need to eliminate one or multiple opponents. <laughs> Landfall is a coveted ability in a deck like this. Colony Heart Expedition can help us access two extra lands and is great for ramp. Retreat to Kazandu rewards us for playing lands, and similar to Nissa, pairs well with Rishkar. Skull Clamp is a commander staple. In a creature heavy deck, it's especially effective. Horn of Greed benefits everyone at the table, but it benefits us most of all, and that's what matters. 
Lifecrafter's Bestiary gives us two things green and red heavily lack, top deck manipulation and card draw. I absolutely love this card. All these elves are awesome, but you know what makes them even cooler? Haste and Menace. Why wait a turn to make your opponent's lives miserable when you can start right away instead? Nylea and Perforos have blessed us with their holy weapons to help us smash our enemies. Nylea's bow is a multi-purpose powerhouse that requires an immediate response from our opponents. The hammer of Perforos speeds our creatures up and lets us sack lands to create 3-3 hasty tokens. Here it is, my favorite enchantment in Magic. Beastmaster Ascension is a ridiculously powerful card. If your opponents don't respond to it, they will die. I guarantee it. The land base for this deck is really simple. 20 forests, 5 mountains, 4 cycle lands for extra card draw, 2 fetch lands for mana fixing, 2 man lands because attacking with lands is awesome, and 1 dual land, Temple of Abandon, which lets us scry 1 when we play it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You rock. If you want to connect with me on social media, those links are in the description below. I also posted the link to this deck list down below. Go check it out and show it some love. Let me know in the comments below, which commander should I deck tech next? If you're down with what I'm doing, show me a little love. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.